My name is Alex Dorgen. I'm an Ansible specialist, and I'm going to be walking through how I can use event-driven Ansible with a hypervisor to improve some of my automatic remediation. So what do I mean when I'm talking about event-driven Ansible with hypervisors? If you've seen some of my event-driven Ansible in the past, you've probably seen me install something like Prometheus or other uses of installed Dynatrace agents onto the end system. But if you notice, most hypervisors already have an agent that they install, such as the VMware tools, Overt tools, or you know, AWS and Azure also have monitoring tools so they can display CPU usage, memory usage, and disk space. So you don't necessarily need to install additional monitoring tools for those particular use cases. And since I'm monitoring at the hypervisor level, for VMware, I can also see the status of those ESX hosts. So if they're having CPU issues or disk space usage, I can also use that as a trigger for automation. Many of these tools and hypervisors already have existing alerts, so I don't have to design the expressions to figure out what constitutes high CPU usage. I can just tie into that existing alert, have it use my trigger to reach out to event driven Ansible, and then still have the playbook in automation controller to do that response. So let's look at a flow in VMware to see how this all works. So in my case, the event source would be vCenter with a particular alert, whether it's host CPU usage or host memory usage, maybe from the ESX side, or I want to get into the individual VMs with, again, host usage for memory, CPU, or disk space, and I can use that as a trigger into the webhook that's listening on Event Driven Ansible. Event Driven Ansible then looks at the exact alerts coming in and sends that to Automation Controller to launch the particular job template for only the host that has that alert on it. So I don't have to worry about automating against every single host in my environment and adding two cores to every single virtual machine. Not exactly a great use of my resources. So for vCenter, for me, for it to get to work, I did have to write a custom script. Because I am working on vCenter 6.7, I'm still operating on a Windows host. So I created a PowerShell script. The nice aspect of VMware and their alerts is they do provide environment variables with the target name, alarm value, and the alarm itself. So I only needed one script for all of this to work. So I didn't have to create a custom script for every single different type of alert. I have one alert, one script that can then populate that information to Event Driven Ansible, and then I can use that target and that alarm to determine what action I want to take. So on the Ansible side, on the rule books, I'm listening in this case on port 5000. And for my first alert that I want to respond to, I'm just listening to the host memory usage alarm. So this is specifically to ESX hosts. So I will only respond to that. So I'm going to launch, in this case, my migrate VM for ESX memory issue job template. And I'm particular passing in only the ESX host that has the memory issue. I don't want to have to worry about migrating off of every ESX host in my environment. I only want to go against the one that has a memory issue. Obviously, I'm only doing one alert at this time, but it's very easy to grow to CPU usage or the VMs themselves in a very controlled fashion. So I did run into some challenges managing VMware. Uh, memory was easy. I was able to just use the um, SOAP API to get all the information about the available memory as well as the um, used memory. So it was very easy to figure out all right, which host is the most loaded or which is the least loaded so I could transfer virtual machines. I wasn't able to get the same information about CPU percentage. It only gave me the total number of cores. And rather than going through every single virtual machine to figure out how many cores have been allocated, I was able to leverage Power CLI, which hits a different endpoint to get some XML data, and I was able to get the actual percentage of CPU being used, so I can then use that to migrate to a host that is not overloaded. So it did require a little bit of uh, finagling to get this all to work, but it still gives the capability, again, of getting the information directly from vCenter or AWS or Azure to figure out what information I need to migrate with. So let's dive into an example leveraging vCenter and an overloaded ESX host on memory usage and to see how that can play into an automation. So jumping into the demonstration environment, as you can see, I'm already logged into vCenter and how I had to set up the actual alarms and the outbound alerting was in the configure section under alarm definitions. The nice thing is vCenter already has a large number of alarms and definitions already set up for me. So in my case, you can either search by object type for host or virtual machine, but I specifically want to look up the host alarms, host being ESX host, and I can look at either CPU usage or, because I know what my highest issue rate is now, is host memory usage. So I'm just going to edit the existing alert. I'm not going to change the name, but I did add in this run script section, and I can have it repeat as many times as I want. So if I'm concerned 
hey, moving one VM isn't enough. I could have it repeat every five minutes to make sure that ESX host isn't overloaded because my script right now only moves a single VM. But in my case, because my ESX and my vCenter is actually operating on Windows, I'm running a PowerShell script, which is just doing what I showed before, getting the alarm information, host information, and sending that to a vendor of Ansible. If your vCenter is operating on a Linux host, I can do a curl command or run a uh, Python script to do the same capability. So in this case, I've set it to be every 30 seconds. If it's above 90%, you can adjust how you see fit. I also have, this is my warning trigger. I have an alarm trigger for critical as well. Again, you can adjust to have the script run when you feel comfortable. But in this case, I can already see that I'm kind of at a high issue, so it will trigger on warning. I'm going to save. And then obviously in 30 seconds, it can hit that point of being alarmed and then we'll start doing that transfer for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer any existing VMs to that host. So in this case, this is on EXX01. So I'll transfer this over. And I'll also transfer another host that I know is also sitting on another host. And all I'm using is vMotion from the VMware side of things to do that transfer. But now it will very quickly overload that ESX host. So in about 30 seconds, it will hit that alarm. So what am I doing from the Ansible side to kind of manage what's going on? So all I'm doing from the Ansible side is once that alert comes in and it triggers the job template, it's gathering the cluster information, figuring out all the ESX hosts that exist getting that information for the host with the most available memory still. So I don't want to transfer it to a host that's also overloaded. Then I get all the VMs on there and transfer one of them to the free ESX host. So very simple process for me to just pick a VM that happens to exist, transfer that over to a less loaded host and go about the process. The same thing exists from the CPU side of things. I just had to make some additional changes where instead of pulling it via the SOAP API, I actually used the Power CLI um, capability in VMware to go through that process as well. So I should be able to see in here if an alert has been triggered and it looks like as of a few seconds ago it was. So if I go into rule audit, I can see that as of 1139, one was triggered. So I conveniently had this as I was setting this up, but in a couple other seconds, another alert will come through as it goes through the process of re relocating that virtual machine. And I'll be able to audit that in event driven Ansible to see exactly what alarm was triggered on what host, and then I can link that directly into the job template that runs to fix that remediation. So it's very easy to kind of see exactly what's going on and all that's maintained between event-driven Ansible as well as the automation controller itself. So if I refresh this page, I should see another one come through momentarily, and that will again give me that capability to see exactly what's going on. But I can see in this case, one was created and fired at 11.30, 9.05, and this one, I can see exactly what triggered. So can, this is actually the um, setup that I had for a particular host. And then I can see that it has that job template that, that gets called on the AAP side of things. So it will log me into the automation platform to the exact job template. And I can see that it goes through the process of figuring out what virtual machines I can transfer over. So it gets all the ESX hosts, figures out the one with the most memory gathers a VM for it and then transfer that over. So I can see at the end of the day, it did transfer this host onto ESX01, which is my other ESX host that has significantly more memory available. So because I had another host that also triggered, I actually just ran that host again. So at 1140, I had another host get triggered and switch over. And in this case, you can see that the my Palo VM was also transferred over. So because I can set that ability to do this on multiple occasions, I could have it delay for five minutes and then re-trigger gives you a lot of capability to have this used for every single alert that exists inside vCenter. So there are a lot of alarm definitions if you haven't looked through. And I kind of all of these use that exact same PowerShell script that I have just sitting on that virtual machine that has um, vCenter installed on it. So I know most users today do have Linux as the underlying operating system. So I could just use a straight curl command or modify to use Python. So where can you go from here? So you can definitely look through all of the various alerts and monitors you already see in your existing hypervisors, decide which one of those you might want to start looking at event-driven Ansible for. So I know commonly I see disk usage, CPU and memory usage as really the most common ones. I've also shared the custom PowerShell script that I've used to have that integration with event-driven Ansible. If 
you're not operating on a Windows virtual machine anymore for vCenter, you can adjust it and just use the curl command, something as simple as you know, curling to that endpoint that I have set up in Event Driven Ansible and passing in conveniently enough the environment variables. I've also shared my Event Driven Ansible rulebook and the two roles that I've created for both high memory and high CPU usage. So you can see exactly how I use Power CLI to get the available CPU usage. So a lot of different options, whether it's in this case VMware or I'm in AWS and Azure, where I might need to increase the size of a particular instance. So I could write a playbook to see what's the existing size, stop the instance, resize a new one and restart. Gives you a lot of capability to manage your environment. So it really is not just limited to vCenter in this case. So thank you for taking the time out to see a little bit more about how I can use Event Driven Ansible directly with a hypervisor to limit the number of tools and agents I might need to install. Thank you. Click my picture on the right to subscribe or click the image on the left to watch another video.